very long time since you needed to be a climate scientist to know there's something very wrong with the planet. Uh, in fact, all you needed to do was to listen to the people on the front line in the global south. Just at one degree warming, we've seen killer floods and droughts. We've seen famine. We've seen super typhoons and hurricanes. Millions of people losing their homes and their livelihoods and while the death count continues to go up and up. We have to ask ourselves, when we know that the reality is out there, when climate scientists tell us we're in decade zero, where every decision we make in this decade will not determine whether we breach just the 1.5 degree guardrail, but whether we breach two, three and further. When we decide, when we know that on Monday, government will be meeting in Poland for the 24th meeting of the climate talks. 24 years they've been meeting to tackle climate change. And you have to ask yourself, well, why haven't we made progress? Why is it that we're still heading, not for 1.5, not for two degrees warming, for anything up to five to seven degrees warming? It's because we're in a system, an economic system that says that black and brown and poor people can be sacrificed in the interests of profit. But we're in a system where the interests of corporations and big business are put ahead of the interests of ordinary people. There are some people at those climate talks who used to say to me, well, you're, you're too radical. We have to live within the system. We have to work within the system. And I used to say to them, that's easy when you're not dying from that system. And friends, that's our challenge. Our challenge is to connect our climate fight with the fight for racial justice, for gender justice, for economic and social justice. Because we know, we know that the politicians, not just there in, the, in Poland, are not acting in, in our interests, but the interests of the elites. The elites are getting richer and richer, while the poor in the world get poorer and poorer. They, are, propose, they continue to propose an economic system, a system of neoliberalism, which says profit before people and planet, which gives untrammeled power to corporations, which denies ordinary people the right to a dignified life. But friends, we have to, when we build that movement, we have to have a vision. A vision of internationalism. A vision that actually says it's not simply good enough to say keep the fossil fuels in the ground. Yes, we must do that. But we also have to bring energy to the one and a half billion people in the world who don't have energy. It means fixing our food system, taking on the agribusiness that wrap up, rack up huge profit and while a billion people go hungry. It means taking on those corporations which are cutting down the forest and, put, and giving land rights to indigenous and poor people. But that means we have to be, we have to recognize that we face powerful forces against us. And that really is our big challenge. Our big challenge is to connect our fights here in this country to our fights globally. So yes, we must stand and we must stand and say no to fracking. But we also must remember that just a mile down the road is the city of London, where our banks and corporations are driving climate injustice, where they are the ones responsible for putting black and brown lives on and sacrificing black and brown lives. So we need more than just saying stop fossil fuels. We need to have a vision of the world, a vision of the world which is fairer, which is more equal, which is safer, and we have that. We have the solutions to the climate crisis. What we lack is power. And to build power, we need to build a powerful movement. And that means everybody here has to not just march today, but to recognize that we have to go back and connect our fights to the fights for soldier justice. So we have to say to people in this country, those who are facing a choice between whether they heat their homes or eat, our, our solutions can bring warm homes. Our solutions are people's own energy systems. We say to the millions of people who rely on food banks that we can have a food system which, rely, which gives everybody good, clean and healthy food. 
It means we can connect our fight for economic justice and against austerity to the fight for climate justice. Friends, we have this decade, and but this decade is the one that will determine, and all of us here, we come from a proud tradition, because the people here are part of the same arc of justice, of global justice, that led the fight against slavery, that led the fight against colonialism and imperialism, and are now leading the fight against neoliberalism and for climate justice. Thank you. Woo!